What happens to a schizophrenic behaving oddly when he's encountered by police? Frightening hearing voices. They're quiet, they're hearing voices. You got your tablets with you? Uh, oh, no. You got your tablets? No. Uh, Undercover reporter Adam Holloway impersonates a schizophrenic to find out. Put your bag up. In part two of his report on how the community cares for the mentally ill, Holloway continues his search for a place of safety. Last week, Adam was in Birmingham. He'd been referred to Mayfield Court, a dilapidated private hotel run for the homeless mentally ill. In the course of playing the part of a schizophrenic, I've been directed here by a local teaching hospital. As the social services department of Birmingham told us, it may be awful, but it's better than a cardboard box. The accelerated closure plan for mental hospitals means that Birmingham have to accept substandard accommodation like Mayfield Court for the mentally ill. Mayfield Court think I'm suffering from schizophrenia. Instead, they've got a reporter with a hidden camera investigating how the 75 residents living here are treated. Most of the people here seem to be mentally ill. Mentally a bit ill. Yeah. But, you're, but you're not, though. Why, so why are you in here? No, well, I've got brain damage. Yeah. Oh, have you? Oh, right. Because I got kicked down the stairs a few years ago. I suppose, really, I am one of the same ones here. So it is boring here, isn't it? I feel. Most people seem to revolve their own television. If Mayfield Court were a registered mental home, it would have to provide substantially more medical help. But by calling it a hotel, the owner and Unite need provide the minimum of care. In return for plugging the gap in Birmingham's care needs, he makes a handsome profit from the £120 in weekly state benefits he gets from each resident. There's nothing to do here but vegetate and succumb to one's own delusions. Like this man who endlessly tears paper. Excuse me. Is that your job, doing the paper? Or Archie, who stands all day in the same spot with his back to the wall. Tell me the truth. Or Eric, the schizophrenic who talks to his own voices. How many times have you seen a doctor since you've been here? I'm all right, I'll get by with that. Actually, I'm all right. The doctor's all right. I'll get by. I'm not really, really well. Yeah. 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 Are you a social worker, are you? No, I'm a resident. Oh, I'm actually not. Mayfield Court is owned by Andrew Knight, who could make, we estimate, tens of thousands in profit from the state benefits he's paid for taking in the mentally ill. Do you like that car? Huh? Do you like that car? Yes, I'm very expensive, I should think. Are you the doctor? I'm sorry? How often do you come here? Oh, only when I'm asked to. Do you think it's a nice place? Who are you? What? Who are you? I'm a resident. Yes. Do you think it's a nice place? I wouldn't want to live here myself. Drugs are prescribed by visiting local doctors and administered by nurses on the staff. But few of the nurses, like Gary here, are fully qualified. When Gary turned up for a job at Mayfield Court three years ago, he was asked whether he wanted to be a nurse or the chef. He chose to be a nurse and now dispenses some very powerful drugs. There are nowhere near enough nurses to look after the 75 inmates at Mayfield Court. When Shirley falls off her wheelchair, it's left to another patient and me to pick her up. How many, how many nurses are there? Two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two at night. So, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. Two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two at night. I'm a lunatic. The more elderly who are too ill live upstairs and are seldom seen. How long have you been here for, love? 
here. In his place? Yes. Where were you before this? Uh, Blueberry Hospital. Since when? Yes. 20 years. Well, since you're a little girl. Mm -hmm. This is a shoestring operation, mental health care on the cheap, done with the very minimum of staff. The chronically ill often sleep in their day clothes because there's no one to look after them. Bare wires hang in a maze of corridors in a building with a history of four or five fires in the last three years. How long have you been here? Where were you before you came here? The clinic. Many inmates were once in the long stay Victorian mental hospitals. When these closed, the idea was to put their patients in small groups of sheltered accommodation with good medical care. It was called care in the community, but nowhere near enough money has been provided. Right, look, how are you? Are you all right, dear? You all right? Yeah? When the Community Care Act becomes statutory in April, an increasing number of local councils will have to resort to dumping patients in understaffed places like Mayfield Court. Did she sit there all day on her own? Yeah. Did she talk? No, not very much. Oh, must be awful for her. Yes. When one of the younger inmates wanders off and begins playing with a knife in a shop, it's left to the police to bring him back to Mayfield Court. Do you do that a lot? No, not really. No, just occasionally. Hey, you're off. Hey, you're off. You might see him. That's it. Take care then. Right, young man. Do you think they would make you go to prison? Or do you think she was lying? I've been here a week and I'm bored. Excuse me, Mrs. Powell. Yes. Are you Mrs. Powell? Yes. Is there any chance of doing some work? Because I'm feeling a bit bored. Um, we'll leave it till after lunch and then I'll have it. Okay. Okay. Jim, you can help us. You can help us clear the tables. Okay. So if you collect them, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you where, where they go. Shall I clear that for you? Yeah. A lot of the work is done by trustees, inmates who work for eight pounds a week. I decide to become a trustee. This way up. One of the privileges of being a trustee is bullying the more mentally ill and older the targets. Patricia has stubbed out a cigarette in a cake. Next, Mrs. Powell, the manageress, joins in. When Elizabeth asks for a cup of tea out of kitchen hours, the cleaner tells her she smells. Then she's pushed outside as well. Oh, 
Again, she's bullied when she's in the way of a handyman. Do you usually push old ladies Excuse when me, they're in the way? Excuse me, do you mind coming out of here? Do you usually push old ladies Come when they're in the way? Do you? What are you, some kind of bully? Come on. Do you? Pardon? Do you usually push Excuse old ladies me, when they're in no, the way? Just me out of the way. You're not allowed in there. We asked an independent psychiatrist posing as a relative to visit Mayfield Court and give her assessment of the medical care being provided here. Right, it's dirty, there are very few staff around. The people here look uncared for, they don't look as though they've had much treatment for, for their illnesses. The majority of them have probably got some form of chronic mental illness such as schizophrenia. I should think some of them have probably got learning disabilities, which is what used to be called mental handicap. With, uh, with 75 people in here, how many nurses do you think would be a sort of appropriate, appropriate number? For adequate, adequate care, you'd, I would have thought you'd need probably about 10 nurses per shift, really. Not they wouldn't necessarily all have to be trained, but certainly sort of like, you know, probably five sort of decently trained nurses and it's clear that a lot of these people haven't had baths for ages. Care in the community was meant to replace the old Victorian asylums, but it's precisely the people whose quality of life this modern policy was meant to improve who are suffering for it. Still acting out my role as a schizophrenic, I decide to confront Mrs. Powell, the manageress. Everyone smells and people aren't looked after properly. Come on, please. They bath every day, even though they do smell. They still bath every day. Well, why is it? Is it's our business, not yours. Because everyone doesn't have to have attention. No, is that because you run it like a business? No. How would you run it as, then? Well, I always think that caring do you, think, do you think two nurses on time is caring for people properly? He's running this place down. You don't know what he's done. You want to be here a bit longer to find out what he's done here for them and what they have. Am I right, David? This is a resident. Aren't I right? And it's Whatever boring here. Want. There's nothing to do. There's no, do there's no stimulation time. apart from watching television. Well, the, and the food's disgusting. The food's disgusting? Yes. Well, I think you're rude and I think you are. Oh, well, thank you. Bye-bye, love. If you're a wandering schizophrenic, it's easy to fall through the care net in Birmingham. I've no GP, so I'm a non-person. I didn't last long in a hospital either, and I was bundled in and out to hostels and hotels like Mayfield Court, which are too bad to be officially sanctioned by the city's social service teams. In the end, people like me who are homeless as a result of mental problems usually gravitate to London. While living on the streets there last year, I formed the impression of a city whose social services were unable to cope. Let's see. After a stressful two weeks in a rundown mental home, and having just hitchhiked from Birmingham, a real schizophrenic would be desperate for medication. I looked for the nearest hospital at the bottom of the motorway in West London. Still acting out my role, I'm going to complain of hearing bizarre voices in my head, voices that urge me to look for a place of safety, which they call a hazard-free zone. The voices are being transmitted to me by electronic dust particles in the air. Uh, I was feeling frightened and hearing voices. Do you want to see a doctor tonight, do you? Yeah, yeah, I think I should. All right. You go up to the desk and you have to give in your name, your address, and the date of birth to the lady. And then the doctor will see you in a minute. All right. Is this a hazard-free zone? Yeah. An HF Z. Mm -hmm. An HF Z. What's that? Hazard-free zone. Sure it is, yeah. Within half an hour, I'm being seen by the duty psychiatrist. The system oh. seems to be working here. If you want to see him there, that's why I need to put the chair. Do you want to have a seat, dear? Yeah? How old are you in? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Uh, do you think anyone's trying to harm you? 
sometimes. Who? It's a telephonic network. EDTs. Electronic dust particles. What does that mean? How does that tell me? Because they can know what I'm thinking. How can they know what you're thinking? From the particle. Dust particles are not known as They can tell people. Sorry? They can tell people. Dust particles. Dust particles can't speak. How can they tell people? Transmit. Dust particles can't do anything. They do. How can you believe that dust particles can transmit things? They do. They do. Okay. All right, if you just go and wait in the waiting room, I'll get back to you. Okay. Well, what are you going to do with me? Well, I don't know. I'll get back to you in a few minutes. I go back to the reception area and wait. The doctor appears to have forgotten me. After an hour, a nurse tells me the hospital can't help. Then go and see the police. And they will provide a list of, of some accommodation for the evening. Or they will arrange for you to get transport somewhere else. Right, see the police. Yeah. Are they a hazard free zone? No, they will be able to give you a list of places that you can go and try and stay, hostels and such like. Um, because what we don't want is you sort of sleeping in here all night. What are you going to do? Hmm? What are you going to do because you can't stay here? Yeah. And you can't stay in the waiting room. <laughs> and can I have any treatment for my voices? What did the doctor say to you? I think about that. Well, she must tell you something, whether she's going to treat you or whether you should go. She must say something to you. This hospital is notorious for its lack of psychiatric bed space and its young doctors on call can rarely find places for those at risk. What we've got you to, we've got a, there's a place called Pound Lodge, which has got sort of uh, rooms in there, okay, the, the social services run, okay. That's what it's called, Pound Lodge. And where can I get some treatment? Well, what would, if you want to do that, um, if the voices carry on, then what you can do is register with a local GP. Thank you very much. I phoned Pound Lodge up and they said, fine, go along. It's right by the bus garage. Just there, mate, or? Yeah, I'm getting in there, I think. Well, do you want to you get in there now? Eh? You want to get yeah, in there, there otherwise? Yeah, right. At the government hostel, I find there's a major problem. They won't take me in until I've had hospital treatment. I'm in a catch-22 situation. And the hospital shouldn't have sent me here. Well, they should have done a bit more for you. I mean, they didn't give you any medication, did they? No. Well, basically, they did absolutely nothing for you, did they? So these, these aren't good places for me to try and come then, normally? Well, like I said, unless you agree to get yourself treated, you have to you need some type of medication. Right, OK. Yeah? You see, we've got 90 other people staying here, Ian, and we can't afford to have a bloke hearing voices in these heads. All right, you might be all right today, but we don't know what you're going to be like tomorrow. You have to agree to get medication and get yourself sorted out. I'll be trying to get medication. Does the hospital know their suggested place of safety won't take in people who are mentally ill? I moved to Hackney. With 300% more schizophrenics in this borough than the national average, there should be help here. What? No. I impersonate a schizophrenic shouting at his voices in the street.
nothing happens. Are people used to this kind of thing here? To attract attention and get help, I begin taking off my clothes in the street. As a last resort, I try to get the police to section me using their powers under the Mental Health Act. The police have powers to take a mentally ill person to a place of safety, either a police station or a hospital. I'm frightened and hearing voices. You're frightened and hearing voices? You got your tablets with you? Uh, oh, no. no. You've got your tablets? No. Uh, where do you live, local? No. No, where do you live? He's hearing voices, it's all right, yeah. yeah. Just have a look in your pockets, just to make sure you haven't got anything you shouldn't have. Hang on, no, keep your hands out. Just doing nothing? What are you up to then, mate? I was, I was just feeling a bit frightened, because I was... It's not going to be frightened of, is it? But I was hearing voices. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll go and hear the voices. Put your stuff back on and go and hear your voices somewhere else, all right? Drop it, drop it. Pick your stuff up. Pick your stuff up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Go away. Are you a doctor? Do you know where I can find one? What you asking, mate? I was I was feeling frightened because the hazard free zones in the gate gatekeeper. The hazard free zones. Don't go in. Don't go near them, mate. Keep away. Yeah. Yeah. Go up to Hackney Police Station. What? Yeah. Listen, go up to Hackney Police Station, Ian, and they can sort you out, all right? Keep your clothes on, all right? The friendly driver suggests I go to Hackney Police Station for help. Under Metropolitan Police rules, a police station can be designated a place of safety to mentally ill people at risk. Uh, is this a police station? This is a police station, yeah. Uh, the man in the van, the police van, he said I should come here because I was homeless and frightened and hearing voices. And he said if I wanted help, I should come to you. You're homeless? Yeah. Not too much about that, I'm afraid. And I was frightened and hearing voices, and that's why he told me that if I wanted to, I could come here. Well, I don't know why he told you that. You're going to have to go to the council, see if they can put you up somewhere. <coughs> Can't find anywhere for you. Okay? Where are they? I don't think they'll be open now, but there'll be an emergency number somewhere. It's 11pm. Can the emergency section of Hackney Housing Department provide a place of safety? Well, that's the fourth Hackney emergency housing number I've tried. One of them was a fax, two of them aren't answering, and the fourth was unobtainable. So I guess we better go and join the others on the strand or the embankment. No one knows how many of the people sleeping rough on the streets of our cities are mentally ill. Modern policies were meant to provide care for mentally ill people in the community through appropriate medical and housing facilities. My experience of this has been a best patchy. So, in the end, Perhaps for thousands of people, a place of safety means a shop doorway, a cup of tea, and a sandwich. If you need help with mental health problems, phone 071-724-8000, the helpline for the charity SANE.